What's going on guys, NV Astro here, back at it with another video, and today we have a special guest, Mr. Justin Skinner, aka it will be fun. Make sure you press this link right here to subscribe to his YouTube channel. With that, why don't you go home and give him a few of the specs on these new Hyperboss motors. Hey. Alright, let's do it. Here we are with the 2204-2722 Hyperlite Floss Series motor, aka the Naked Butts. Now, they're not the first ones to do this whole bottomless... Uh, motor where you take out all the additional structure and just leave it down to the mounting platform But they are doing it and everyone else is going to start doing it here, too Because everyone realizing you don't really need all this bottom part for protection It's the bell that takes the damage every time you hit something so they're removing weight there and versus their their uh, V4 series motors which had their old V4 series motors from Hyperlite they had base strength issues where literally the whole motor would rip off the base. And so when they did this, they said that that strengthened the base up. And so they have their new V4 series out that has the naked butt also. So it should be a stronger motor all around. As you see, they have pretty unique color scheme going with this brown and blue. I think it looks actually pretty good together. Even though I don't like brown, it looks good like, like this. So good job, Pyroflip. They came in three different flavors. They came in 27, 22, a 2400 ish. KV and then a 3000 ish KV. Sorry, I don't have the exact numbers, but it's close to around there. The coils look pretty good, but we're excited to see how it handles in the corners, in the straightaways, acceleration, deceleration. And that's what we'll be testing out with MV Astro on the field today with the Q1 test. And we might do it on a UTT track also, because I think that's where this motor might shine. So let's get a look at the weight. Get the scale on, make sure it's teared. All right, and this does, I just want to note, this has 150 millimeters of wire, so it, it's perfect. You can trim it down to your exact needs. I'd rather have more wire than not enough and have to add on wire. So great job to them for making sure to take care of their customers and make their life easier. So with the 150, or 150 millimeter wire, you're coming in at 23.2 grams. And... Overall, you see it does, it does have a C-clip. I know Envy Astro, he's gonna say something about that because he likes the, the nut. Uh, I do too, but you can understand why they're doing the C-clip. They're trying to get the lightest motor possible. It does make it more of a pain to replace bells, but, you know, sacrifices where you have to sacrifice. Let's take it back to Envy Astro at the field. All right, man, good job. Good job. Okay, guys, so, he just gave you guys a few specs on these new Hyperflaws motors, but today, like we always do here on this channel, we're going to do, be doing three tests on these motors. Yes, we're going to be using the 5152s. The reason we're going to be using that is because that's my favorite prop, and we always test every single motor that we get on this same prop. Yes, it may be over propping it, but that's okay. We have a separate video on his channel that we're going to give you guys the best combination with this motor and which prop to use. So press this link right here if you want to see that video. So with that, the first is that we're gonna be doing is a drag race, second race efficiency test, which we have a custom track called the Q1 by Quad Diction, Mr. Justin Skinner designed that track. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about the durability and overall quality of the motor. So let's get started. Hey, move, man, move, move. <laughs> All right, everyone. So for test number one, we did our drag race. And I'll go ahead and post up the numbers for you guys. And overall, this motor did pretty well. Uh, as you can see, the numbers are like 4.6-ish, and uh, they compare it to the F40V3s, not in the sense of power, overall power, but in the sense of the same numbers. So the thing that we felt with these motors, tell them a little bit what you felt first. They were quick motors. I mean, we have a really light frame, so the get up and go was pretty quick, but when you hit the 180 section of it, it felt like it died, and you're having to we're on full throttle. We don't let off full throttle. Mm -hmm. So going through it, it just there's there's a dead dead moment before it picks up the speed again. So the low end torque is just not really there when it has to really grab and go. But overall, I liked them. Top end uh, was actually pretty surprisingly Top end was pretty good. nice. Four point um, six. I mean that's 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 respectable. Four point six is respectable. Definitely a motor you can compete with. But keep in mind that he said that the torque wasn't that good, and I felt the same thing. The torque wasn't good. It, off the line, they didn't feel as powerful as like F40s did yet they had the same number that, uh, that the F40 V3s did. But the top end was definitely there, and I think that's where they shined at. Because even though we had it on a light, overall light build, the torque wasn't there. So, I, But that's kind of what I expected with a 2204 size motor. You don't know. I mean, if you put it on a heavy frame, you're not sure exactly what it's going to do. But 
we, we have a theory that it's not gonna really perform well on a heavy frame. You, you need a light frame. Uh, this, this, this whole build all up is 200 grams with props. And so you throw on a 1300, 140 gram battery, you're looking at 340-ish for a frame. And we usually, our five inches are usually like 500-ish. So we're 160 grams lighter on these motors. That's, that's the reason the times are about the same. But if you were to put it on an equivalent weighted frame and rig, it, it would not be anywhere near. Hey, well, same. we don't know. I, I would honestly like to test that Surge, out myself. So, Surge. Surge, if you're watching this video, I would like a set of these because these aren't mine. These are Justin's. I would actually like to test them out on a actual Tokyo frame. That's what I usually fly. So I would actually like to test them out and see if they could actually compete on a regular build. So next up is the efficiency test. And this is where these motors completely shine. Yep, yep. I'll go ahead and tell you guys the numbers. Uh, my run, I got five minutes and one seconds on a 1500 amp battery. And then on my two 1300 runs, I got, what was it? Like four minutes. Four, four, four or ish No, no, it was just, oh, just about four. Four minutes? Okay. Just about four. And that was on both runs. And then yours, you got a 433 with the 1500 and then 433 as well with a 1300. With a 13, I had a bit prop on the 1500 yeah. that was causing little issues, but I kept pushing through it. Uh, I also crashed a few times, so we stopped the timer every time I crashed. Started the timer as soon as I got back up in the air. Uh, I just couldn't focus for four minutes straight. It was really hard. It is really tough. <laughs> and keep in mind, we were flying like 70% of our capabilities. That way we could keep our lines consistent. And um, we got five minutes though. That's the thing that just surprised yeah, me. Yeah. Five minutes with these, it really gets your brain going because you got to think about keeping your lines straight, uh, staying up in the air, not crashing. And because we're not used to flying for five minutes straight, especially on a track like this. This is a Q1 track and Squirrel. this is a brand new track. So <laughs> I think they did an amazing job on the efficiency. It has been the most efficient setup I've flown. Yeah. I don't know if they're efficient just because it's an overall light build or because the motor is efficient because right here we're looking at we're looking at you know thin arm profiles so you're going to have less prop wash being caught by the frame you also got just overall light build if i'm wondering if this would be like the perfect motor for beginners because you're going to get more flight time but you're going to need something a little bit more durable in the frame we did break an arm today so a more durable frame without sacrificing too much weight and this would be the perfect motor motor probably for a beginner I think so. Plenty of flight time because you need more air time. Yes, less batteries, time. more air time. That's that's the recipe for a good beginner. Four plus minutes on a 1300. I can't even get a minute, I bet, out of a 1300 on regular. Endurance yeah. races are coming up soon. I think so. so. I, I think that motor is great on efficiency. If you guys are looking for an efficient motor on a light build, that's what we tested today. That's definitely the way to go. So now for our final test, which is a durability test. And since we have, I haven't spent too much time with these motors, but just from what I saw today, we crashed a lot, I'll tell you. We broke a camera, we broke an arm, we broke VTXs, we broke antennas. He says we. broke we. a lot of stuff. He <laughs> says we. I, I didn't break anything. You broke all my I shit. Broke, I broke his stuff, but that's okay. We got the video up for you guys. We got the data up for you guys. That's what what's important. And uh, I can tell you guys that this thing, these motors are durable. I mean, I broke a, an arm right on the motor and it didn't damage it, it kept directly, flying. Directly on the motor. So the motor, the motor, I think, I think they probably fixed the issue that Brother Hobby had with their motors, which was that the base kept falling completely off on like hard crashes. The V3, V4s? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think they might have fixed it. I mean, I didn't spend too much time. I haven't spent too much time with them, so I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if they fixed it or not, but just how we crashed today, I think is pretty nice. They didn't overall, mess up or anything. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with these motors. Uh, I, I, I do think you have to have a light frame, but if you can have a light frame, these are impressive motors to be racing around with. They're gonna put up some good times, good race times. Um, we did try out three different props, no, four different props mm -hmm. on these motors, and uh, we're gonna have that in a separate video. So I'll link make it sure down you... somewhere up here. It's gonna be on his channel, so go make sure you subscribe to his because we found some pretty interesting results on that end. Shocking results. Yes. Shocking yes. results. They were very nice. All right, guys, so with that, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe to this guy's channel. That way you guys can see the prop combo with these motors. So with that, see you guys on the next video. Peace out. Peace.